This is a review of ultrasound physics. In this segment, we cover the basic physics of sound. Sound is described as a wave, in other words, traveling variations in some quantity, in this case, pressure. It involves mechanical motion in the medium through which it travels. Pressure variations cause particles of the medium to vibrate due to an increase and decrease of density, as is shown in this diagram. Waves are often demonstrated in still images like the one seen here. Each line to the right of the tuning fork represents a portion of the medium that the sound wave is traveling through. The lines close together represent the compression of the medium seen in the previous animated image. The lines far apart represent refraction or the decompression phase of the wave. Wavelength is the length of space over which one cycle occurs. It is usually expressed in millimeters. One millimeter, of course, is one thousandth of a meter. Frequency is the number of cycles or waves occurring in one second, measured in hertz. One hertz equals one cycle or wave per second. Humans hear from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz, or 20 kilohertz. A kilohertz is 1,000 hertz. Ultrasound is defined as a sound wave frequency beyond 20 kilohertz, but most ultrasound instruments function in the megahertz or million hertz range. Propagation speed is the speed at which a wave moves through a medium. It's measured in meters per second, or it can be measured in millimeters per microsecond. Propagation speed depends on the medium's density and stiffness. Therefore, density and stiffness, or hardness, determine a propagation speed. Hardness is the resistance of a material to compression and therefore is the inverse of compressibility. Increased hardness usually increases propagation speed. Since hardness usually increases propagation speed, solids usually have the highest propagation speeds, liquids have intermediate propagation speeds, and gases have the lowest propagation speeds. Wavelength, frequency, and propagation speeds are interrelated. So if one of these variables is held constant, the other two will change in relation to one another. So if an ultrasound generator is at a set frequency and the sound waves pass through a solid medium, the faster propagation speed will be associated with a longer wavelength for those sound waves. Alternatively, if the same ultrasound generator is set at the same frequency and the sound waves pass through a liquid medium, the slower propagation speed will be associated with a shorter wavelength for those sound waves. This also can be viewed in the form of an equation. If the frequency is held constant, the wavelength and propagation speed will increase and decrease in relation to each other. Using the same formula and keeping the propagation speed constant, Decreasing the frequency will result in a longer wavelength, and increasing the frequency will result in a shorter wavelength. So let's review these interrelationships again using an example that may be encountered in clinical practice. Many times it is not possible to alter the medium through which sound waves travel, so the propagation speed cannot be changed. However, we can change the wavelength of sound waves by changing the frequency of an ultrasound generator. In the two examples here, the propagation speed is constant. The lower frequency in the illustration above results in a longer wavelength, and the higher frequency in the illustration below results in a shorter wavelength. As will be demonstrated in subsequent segments, wavelength and frequency, among other things, will influence the image resolution and range of scan produced by endosonography instruments. As an example, for a stable medium with a set propagation speed, increasing the frequency will generally decrease the wavelength and improve resolution, but will reduce the effective depth of ultrasound penetration.